the dearest friend that I have ever known. And it will take the whole eternity just to thank him for the love that he has shown. Just to thank him for this world are twisted and evil and in our minds we cannot find right or wrong anymore we spend to recycle keep our highways clear we're concerned about things like the earth's atmosphere and some even cry because the wells may not always be here Killing our children. It's time to cry for the children. For their blood flows like a river in the name of women's rights. But God knows each heartbeat. He knows every birthday that should have been. America, please get back on your knees for the sake of our children. Eyes that never saw mother Now gaze on the Savior Cries never, cries a prayer To the land they adore Little hands that in death were torn apart Are now held by a hand that's been nailed scarred Heaven now welcome innocent children we daily destroy but we're killing our children it's time to cry for the children for their blood flows like a river in the name of women's rights but God knows each heartbeat he knows every birthday that should have been America, please, get back on your knees for the sake of our children. America, please, get back on your knees for the sake of our children. Well, amen. Let me just say this. Abortion is a terrible thing. 139th Psalm tells us exactly of how our parts were known before we were ever born. And as we were formed in the womb, how terrible. In America, we kill over a million babies a year uh, with abortion. How terrible. And uh, it's good that we can cry out against it. The Bible surely cries out against it. And how sad it is that we uh, are murdering babies uh, uh, over a million a year. How Amen. sad, how sad. Go ahead, brother. It's deplorable how our country will let everything else go and, and, and kill over a million babies every year. It just tear them apart while they're still in their mother's womb. Yeah. One night up on the sea, a ship was tossing to and fro. Breakers dashed on every hand, angry winds around it blow. All aboard were filled with fright as the mighty bills rolled. Then they called upon the one who the winds and waves controlled. When he reaches out his hand, Bill ceases his command. Winds and waves obey his will when he says to them, Be still. What man is this they all did say That the wind and sea obey I'm so glad he sailed with me He's the master of the sea Though the storms of life may rage 
and the billows round you roll. He can calm life's troubled sea as he did in days of old. As upon life's sea you sail, trust in him who never fell. I'm so glad he sailed with me. He's a master of the sea. When he reaches out his hand, Billow sees at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still. What man is this they all did say that the wind and sea obey? I'm so glad he sailed with me. He's a master of the sea. I'm so glad he sailed with me. He's a master of the sea. Yeah. yeah. Amen. What man is this they all did say? That the wind and the sea obey. <laughs> is the Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty is he. A mighty Amen. Savior is he. Woo! I get so excited when you just think about it sometimes. I'll try to do this one right here. It's been a while since I've done this one, I think. I have a good life here below. And the Lord has blessed me so. Oh, but sometimes I want to go home. Friends and family I have here. And the love I hold so dear. Oh, but sometimes I want to go home. Home has never looked so good to me tears are gone and spirits that are free so when I find I've almost fallen I see tomorrow and it keeps me going there's no turning back I just got to make it home there's a savior I've never seen I want to thank him for all he's been to me. And you know sometimes I just want to go home. Golden street as clear as crystal. That my feet are longing to walk on. And you know sometimes I just want to go home. Home has never looked so good to me. Tears are gone and spirits are free. So when I find I've almost fallen, I see tomorrow and it keeps me going. There's no turning back, for I want to make it home. There's no turning back. I've just got to make it home. Amen. 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 Yeah. This will be your last one, Billy Joe. Huh? This will be your last one. This will be the last one. Let's see here. What I've got here. I'll do our favorite one here. He walked up to my front porch with a Bible in his hand. I could tell by the way he looked was an old time preacher man. He asked, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. I'd like to talk to you, he said, about a friend of mine. An old time preacher man, he came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray, he taught me how to pray. He opened up his Bible as he read to me how Jesus died on the cross, the cross of Calvary. That Jesus died on that cross for you. Well, 
if you do, then trust him now, and he will save you too. He was an old time preacher man, he came to me that day, with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray, he taught me how to pray. He was an old time preacher man, he came to me that day. With the Bible in his hand, he taught me how to pray. Yes, he taught me how to pray. He taught me how to pray. He's an old time preacher man, there he is. Thank you, Billy Joe. Appreciate your play and always appreciate you being here with us. What a blessing. All right, we're going to be in Isaiah 53 today. It's the clearest representation of the death of Christ in the Old Testament. And we want to... Uh, there you go. Let me grab this. Thank you. Put this microphone on. Okay, hello, hello. So. Okay, I guess that's it. Um, Isaiah 53. What page is it on, uh, church, in the Pew Bibles? Isaiah 53. What page is it? 790. 790? 798, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, it's Old Testament. It's a short book. It's the, it's the, it's the best uh, description of the death of Christ. Isaiah represents the Lord Jesus Christ um, best out of all of the prophets and this is uh, just so wonderful Isaiah 53 get the wrong page yeah. let's stand as we read it together church I'll read verse 1 we'll read verse 2 together and we'll read on it just has 12 verses who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath not form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, rejected of, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and it carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, for he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He hath made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any <clears throat> deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, 
He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Let us pray, Lord, thank you now for this wonderful passage of Scripture describing the death, the payment for our sins of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, here very clearly given in Isaiah chapter 53. Make it real to our heart. Save that soul nearest hell this morning. Reclaim a backslider. And give Christians higher ground. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, this is a marvelous portion of Scripture. We many times avoid the Old Testament and we don't pay attention to it. The prophets are wonderful. These prophets of today, uh, uh, modern, modern day prophets are basically a bunch of phonies. Uh, modern day prophets, uh, what they prophesy, they prophesy wealth and health. That's what they prophesy. I'm talking about Benny Hinn. I'm talking about, uh, you name them, they're, they're all on there. You watch them on uh, television and, and uh, different things. And uh, they tell you that uh, you send the money and they'll pray for you and you'll get well and you'll be rich too like they are. And uh, they're a bunch of phonies. Uh, the old, old Testament prophets, and if you get sucked up in that, you're a fool. If you get sucked up in that foolishness, I got a brook, I got a bridge at Brooklyn I own. I'll sell to you very cheap too, and it's beautiful. I seen on television the other day, Billy. Joe, are you interested in my Bro Brooklyn bridge? No. <laughs> well, that's good, and uh, uh, you're not interested in those phony baloney no. prophets today, are you? Old Testament prophets, basically their, their uh, uh, message was judgment. Judgment upon Israel and judgment upon any nation that rejected Christ. And basically we can look at this too and we can see that God will bring judgment upon non-believers that will not repent. Now here in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, we have the strong statement of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at it. We just read it. Let's look at it. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Turn my phone on. For this, uh, for uh, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when uh, we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should uh, desire him. Now you see the Savior, they rejected him uh, in the Old Testament. He's rejected in the New Testament by the vast majority. The majority of people do not receive Christ. He hasn't come in majesty and splendor and and he will come. He will come as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and and he will rule and reign. And, and, but that's not the way he came the first time. And that's not the way he's presented. Uh, he was the uh, lowly Savior, the humble one, you see. And it tells about him here. But the majority of people uh, reject that. How we go on, verse 3. He was despised and rejected of men. There you go. And he is today. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. The rejection of Christ, it always has been. Of course, he was rejected by the Jews as a nation. The Jews as a nation, they have not. Uh, the Jews will receive Christ and they'll, they'll, have, they'll be 144 
a uh, thousand Jewish evangelists that will go to the four corners of the world and preach Jesus Christ. And then Jerusalem uh, will be the center of evangelism, and it'll be headquarters. But a lot of things have to happen. That didn't happen in 1948. Some Christians teach that the Jews were regathered uh, in uh, in Jerusalem in 1948. That's not that's not true. That was Zionism. Jews took over the nation again. But the true regathering of God's people, there will be a number of things that happen before that happens. You'll have the great tribulation. We as Christians will be raptured. We'll go up and 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 to meet the Lord in the air, and we'll forever. Uh, uh, be with the Lord in the air. That would be a wonderful time. And seven years of tribulation. And then you'll have the millennium and you have all of this. And then uh, uh, we will have the regathering afterwards. And that will be a wonderful thing. Let's go on to verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. So here he was. He had to. This is the way it had to be. He had to be wounded for our transgressions, as it says here. Verse five. Look at here, talking about Jesus again. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isn't that wonderful? Now that's the Savior. Glory to God, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The death of our Savior, the payment of our sin. There is no remission of sins except by the shedding of blood. They shed the blood in the Old Testament. All of the sacrifices were done. And it was in, it was in uh, foreseeing the Savior to come. Did the, the Bible says, did the blood of uh, goats and, and turtle doves and calves... Did it? Uh, did that forgive sin? No, it wasn't the blood of animals. That they were the foreshadowing, and they were the picture of Christ to come and shed His blood. Very plainly seen, uh, uh, not not very plainly seen then, but they did with hope of Him coming. And of course, we look back very clearly to the cross of Christ and the shedding of His blood for our sins, and the power of the resurrection on the third day. Look at verse 6. Here you and I are. Here everybody is. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Isn't that sad? Everybody turns their own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, the sins of the whole world on you and my Billy Joe, your sins and mine and, and Gary, your sins and, and David and 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 Charlie and and Mickey and Joanne and Brad and and uh, everybody Joe and and uh, uh, Donna or Di is it Donna or Diane? Diane, I'm sorry, just met her yesterday. I'm old. I don't get things very quickly. Diane. <laughs> and all of us, we uh, he's laid uh, he. Our sins, he's died for my sins and your sins and for the, the iniquity of us all have been laid upon him if you'll accept it. But if you won't accept the gift, the wages of sin is death and hell, but the gift of God is eternal. If you've not been born again, if you don't know you're born again, you got to get that. You must have the born again experience. Yeah. Laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Oh, he just took it. He took our sin and, and he bore our sins. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you haven't been saved yet, He's right there near to you. And all you have to do is call upon him and he'll save you today. Jesus is very near. Oh, my, yes. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. The Bible talks about Jesus as being the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Now, he's our lamb. 
He's the lamb shed. Oh, remember, uh, do, do you remember the marvelous picture of the Lord, of the shedding of the, of the, of the blood of Jesus Christ? Uh, remember, remember when the Jews were delivered from Egypt? Do you remember that? And remember all the plagues that went? Do you remember what the last plague was? What was the last plague? Does, does anybody remember? Death of the firstborn. The death angel came. And it said, they were told, the Jews, the believers were told, they were told that uh, in order to save their firstborn child, they had to slay a lamb, a lamb for a household, and they were to, they were to take the blood of that lamb, and they were to take hyssop and dip it in the blood, and they were to put it on the side posts of the house and across the top of the doorway of their house. And then the death angel was coming over. And if you were a believer, the death angel would pass over your house and your firstborn wouldn't be slain. And all the others that were non-believers, their firstborn was slain. Even unto the, uh, uh, the one... Uh, that was the uh, uh, what did you call him then? Who was the big boss then? Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Even the son of Pharaoh was slain. So finally, finally, Pharaoh's heart was broken enough, and that he he freed the Jews, where they were they were able to leave. All the Lamb of God. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb and he opened out his mouth he took he took our penalty he didn't say he didn't deserve it because he didn't deserve it we deserved it but he died in our place have you been saved have you taken him to be your savior i'm not asking you if you're a baptist or a catholic or a methodist or a presbyterian or pentecostal i'm asking you uh, if you have believed on the lord jesus christ a lamb of god which taketh away the sin of the world. Verse 8, He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Of course, talking about our Savior again as we continue on. And verse 9, And he made his grave with the wicked, see that was prophecy. He made his here it was. He made his grave uh, 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 with the wicked, and with the rich in his death. Uh, re remember that how he was put in a new tomb. Uh, what was the guy's name again? I'm kind of forgetting his name. Who was it that gave his uh, grave for Jesus to be buried in? Let me think. Can you think of anybody? You got any Bible students in here? Where's my Bible student Bill? He's over there in the kitchen. Do you remember who was it that gave his grave, uh, gave his gravesite, Bill? Do you remember? Joseph. Huh? Joseph. Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He's right. Good for you. Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one. He's a rich man. And uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, uh, gave, thank you, Bill. I thought I could count on him for that. He's pretty up to date on the Bible. And. I got an excuse. I'm getting old and forgetful. You know, I don't know. I, I was, I, I had questions on that, and and uh, and I said, what are the, uh, uh, and I asked someone, what you know, what were the signs of Alzheimer? What were the uh, four signs of Alzheimer? And they told me what it was, and uh, uh, the first uh, sign of Alzheimer's is forgetfulness, and I can't remember the other three. <laughs> That wasn't too bad, was it? Just some lesson were to learn from Rahab the prostitute. She assisted those Israelites, right? Rahab the prostitute, she did. And she she assisted the spies, and she they were and they were spared because because she hung out a red woman a, a red a ribbon, and she put a uh, and and she and 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 she was uh, spared her and her family. Are we to learn anything? Yes, we are to learn a lot from it. Yes, Bill. And from her, the line and not our Savior came. Do what? From Rahab, our line, she, she was the same heavenly as uh, our Savior. 
Yeah, uh, uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing you can learn from Rahab. Rahab was in the genealogy of Jesus. She's a whore. Said Rahab, she's a prostitute, and but she she got saved. Prostitute gets saved. We see him coming on it down. Uh, 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 Bill and I, as we were coming back from picking up yesterday, uh, uh, we seen. Uh, uh, of course, we'd ride up down uh, Ridgewood all the time, and and uh, and there was a, a a new girl strutting on Ridgewood, coming around the corner there on on International Speedway in Ridgewood, strutting her stuff and uh, on her cell phone. You can generally tell a prostitute on Ridgewood uh, shaking it and talking on the phone. He says, "I, I don't, I don't think a preacher. I don't care if you think a preacher. I'm just telling you the truth. That's what it was." And and I told Bill, he'd been around out here too. I said, he got a new girl in town on the street. And uh, he said, yeah, they're, they're coming all the time. And they are. But you know, that new girl on the street that was strutting her stuff and talking on the cell phone and trying to attract some attention to get picked up. Um, I, I like so much. I had to tell you a story about a prostitute. Uh, over here at our next door, we used to live, be over here at the other place. Uh, we used to have a... a, a a young lady that uh, that used to sell herself on Ridgewood Avenue, and and uh, sometimes she'd have pickup trucks stop in front of the church. She'd jump out and come into church, and uh, and she got saved, and she went to another city now, and where her mom was and everything, and and she told me that she says, oh, uh, I, I, she says I'm so glad I got saved, and I'm not jumping in and out of them pickup trucks anymore. That's what she told me. <laughs> that was her that was her testimony. And uh, yeah, Rahab, she was a harlot, and and I've seen that. I'm trying to remember her name, but she got wonderfully saved, and her mother was a Christian, and on and on. But you see, uh, whether it be Rahab uh, back in the day in the Bible days or today, a prostitute can get saved today. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's that's a wonderful thing. That's. Well, wait a minute. Now we I don't have to. Ma'am, ma'am, we're going to have to talk about that later. i got to go on. I didn't mind your little question on Rahab, but we're going to have to come off it now. Let's go on. And it says here, uh, verse 10, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper uh, in his hand. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Wow. Did you know, did you know that Jesus, does it, did anybody, I, I think several of you know this one. Do you remember who betrayed Jesus? Judas. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve. But you know, just before the crucifixion, Jesus came, kissed him, and called him friend. <laughs> Isn't that something? You know, Jesus had to go to the cross. Judas has his part. Not that he had a good part, and he's burning in hell today, but it was part of the plan. And it said here in verse 10, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. How did it please God the Father to have his son die on Calvary's cross and pay for our sins? How did that happen? What was that all about? Because it had to be done that way. There's no way that you and I could have been saved but by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is. That it pleased him, it says here, yet it pleased him to bruise him. He had put him to grief. Oh, it's wonderful. I see him a friend, my friend from Arizona uh, joined in. Guy Mall. Guy Mall was, uh, was from Milwaukee. He got saved in Milwaukee. Years later, I'll just tell you this, some of you have heard it before. He called me and says, hey, pastor, it's Guy Mall. I said, Guy who? 
And he says, Guy Maul from Milwaukee. Then I started thinking he reminded me about his wife, Sabrina. And on and that, he says, you know, he said, I'm in Arizona and I pastor a church. And I said, well, praise God, Guy Maul. He's up there right now. Hi, Guy. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Say hi to Sabrina. Uh, Guy, and then he called me and he says, Sabrina and I are coming to Daytona Beach. I says, what? He said, yeah, my son, his son uh, makes a lot of money. He works in Silicon Valley there in California. And he says, I want to send him on a vacation and give him, I guess, pretty much money uh, to take a vacation. And he told his son, I want to, I want to fly to, uh, they, I want to go to Daytona Beach. And his son says, well, why, I hope I'm telling this right, guy. You get me straightened out if I'm telling it wrong. He says, we got beaches here, and we got, why you got to go to Daytona Beach? He says, I'm going to see my pastor. <laughs> and he came here, and we spent time, and and uh, that was a blessing. And uh, you see, that's one of the coupons I can be clipping now as an old pastor. I got some ministry I had in the past that are following on in the work, amen? Angry birds. And, 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 and pastoring in Arizona and Sean Brewster there in Milwaukee and others uh, that are pastoring. Good to have you aboard, guy. And one, 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 one thing I liked what he said. And he heard me preaching that when he come here, and he hears me. He said, I guess I think he seen me on YouTube or something, and he says, "Same old Pastor Varga preaching the same way." <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I hope I'm preaching the same way. That I don't I don't try to change, brother Maul. That brother guy, my my friend, and he he gonna start. He's got the pastor church. He's starting. To, he's starting a rescue mission, and uh, he just called me about that a couple weeks ago, and says I'm gonna start a rescue mission here too, and that's what he's doing there too. I says good for you. I do all I can to help you and and tell you what to do. God bless you. Uh, and we go on here in Isaiah 53, the the most wonderful chapter telling about the death of Christ, and we go on, and he pleased the uh, the Lord. He pleased to bruise him, that he hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. You see, Jesus was the offering for sin, my sins and your sins and the sins of the world. And it pleased God because there's only way we could be saved. But God himself would die and shed his blood and pay for our sins. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you glad Jesus died for you today? Aren't you glad you saved? Oh, praise God. Everything's okay. Verse 11. He shall see, uh, he shall see of the travail of his soul what a punishment Jesus took. The Bible says in another chapter of Isaiah, it says his vestige or his face was so marred that he was unrecognizable as a man. I see some guys pretty beat up. And I used to be around some violent stuff before I was saved. I'd never been in a fight since I've been saved, praise God, April 4th, 1969. But I see some guys that's punched out pretty good. You probably have too in the past. But I've, <clears throat> I've never seen anybody beaten up as bad as Jesus was where you couldn't tell it was a man. I never, I never said that have to be, you have to be dead to be like that almost, you'd think. I mean, you couldn't tell. You wouldn't be able to tell he had eyes or nose or anything. And just teeth bust out and just, just probably just a glob of flesh and blood, I guess. That's how terribly Jesus was treated. His vestige was so marred. And he died for you and he died for me. And he says, he shall, uh, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. You see, the only satisfaction God the Father would accept for the payment for sin was the brutal uh, despising and beating of His precious Son, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, and uh, uh, being beat so terribly and abused and, and, and uh, wounded and then died for our sins and shed His blood. He said, that was the only satisfaction that God the Father would accept for the payment for my sins and your sins, Billy Joe, and all of your sins, and you're out there in Facebook. That's the only satisfaction for payment for our wicked hearts and our wicked sins was the death of His dear, precious Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Yes, He shall 
uh, see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many? See, justify, justified all of us if you'll be saved. There's people in here, you've told me, there's people sitting in church today, you're not saved. You, you've never been saved. I wish you'd get saved today. Some have been coming around here a long time. They love me, I believe, and they respect me, and, uh, and yet they're still not saved. Billy Joe, you know there's people sitting right in here today that aren't saved. I hope to get saved today. Amen. Justify many, for he shall hear, uh, for he shall bear their iniquities. That's sin. He bore our sins on Calvary's cross. That's what you have to believe. I'm not trying to make a Baptist out of you. I'm not trying to make a rescue mission person out of you. I'm trying to uh, get you to be a born-again Christian. He had died and shed his blood and rose again, and you must trust in God Amen. and call upon him. And call upon him. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, the three of them, you see there, remember, three on the cross. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Wow! <laughs> what a verse! Look at that closing out. Therefore, he told all about this in chapter 3. Here we're closing in verse 53, in verse 12, 53. Therefore, it means because of that, we got this. Will he divide a portion with the great? Yeah. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. Oh, my God. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors died for all of our sins brother billy joe uh, don't forget the next prayer for her family i will i will i'll remember that remind me uh, when i just finish up here in just a minute yes yes we will glad you reminded me of that billy joe i don't know how <laughs> i don't know much about this uh facebook but i'm thinking Guy Maul, I think he's still on here. And I think if I hit invite, then he might be able to say something on here. Is that way? I don't know. Let me hit it. So I don't. All I know is push live and I can talk on Facebook. And and then I hit finish and then I hit, oh, let me hit this, invite. Invite Guy to be a guest. Yes. You're invited, Guy. Now, can you talk? Or I don't think I can hear you. Can you write on there or what? What does that mean? I don't know. Guy said, oh, he already said something. Preach the word. Amen. <laughs> what about it, friend? What are you going to do with Jesus? Amen. What are you going to do with Jesus that's called to Christ? What are you going to do with the one that is bruised for our iniquities? Have you trusted in his shed blood? Have you trusted in the power of the resurrection? That's the gospel. There's nothing else that will save you. There is nothing else that can give you forgiveness. He died for the sins, as it said here. He died. Uh, he made intercession for the transgressors uh, and was numbered. Uh, and he bare the sins of many. Now, his blood will save everybody, but not everybody's saved. There's more people lost than saved. Most people won't receive him. But John 1.12 says, As many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even that believe upon his name. I've received him April 4th, 1960. How many of you here in the audience, you've received Christ, you're saved? Amen. All right, some of you, amen. The lady got two hands up front, amen. That's good. Some of you aren't. Most are. A few aren't, amen. How about out there? Are you saved? Send up one of them thumbs up or send up a happy face or send up something if you're saved. Let me see some of that. I've seen some already. <laughs> Are you saved? Well, if you're not, this is your time to get saved. If you could not send up a, a thumb, there goes something. Thumbs up. 
If you can't send a thumbs up or a happy face or make some kind of acknowledgement, here comes another one. If you don't know you're saved out there in Facebook and here in church, let's pray the sinner's prayer together right now. And Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you through the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the resurrection. Thank you for this 53rd Isaiah, the strongest representation of the death of Christ in the Old Testament. I believe in his shed blood and his resurrection. I've been born again. Others have shaken, <laughs> sent up, thumbs up out in Facebook. Some have acknowledged it with the uplifted hand here in church. You that aren't saved, you know you're not saved. Repent. Humble yourself. Pray this sinner's prayer with me. Become a child of God. Pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. But best I know how, with an honest heart, I receive you as my Savior and only hope of a home in heaven. Thank you, dear Lord, for saving me right now. I hope you've done that out in the Facebook. If you've done it here in church, if you're not sure you're saved before and you asked Jesus to save you here in church today, would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hand. Anybody pray that sinner's prayer today? Yes. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. That's wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Lord, we're thankful for those who are saved here in the auditorium today and out there on Facebook. Your wonderful Savior yes. Thank you, Jesus. died for the transgressions of many, as it tells us in 53 Isaiah, yes. and rose from the grave. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, I have a prayer request of Brother Billy Joe, his dear wife Nancy. Uh, was it his, his sister? sister yeah. Her sister died in uh, Tennessee, and and they weren't able to to go to the funeral because of time constraints. It was she just died a few days ago, and they're burying her today. They weren't able to go, but pray for the family because. Uh, at a, at a time like this, some family members that aren't saved could be saved. Uh, it's a great time to, I as a preacher, I always bring salvation appeal at a, at a, at a funeral. And, but, but, pray, but pray for Nancy's uh, a family back in Tennessee at that funeral today. She had a special request for that, and Billy Joe brought it, so uh, we'll be praying. And God answers prayer. Listen, here's another thing I want you to keep praying for out there on Facebook and here in the church. My... Uh, uh, my granddaughter, uh, Jessica, she she graduated from school, and she's a nurse, nurse practitioner. That's like a doctor. Don't, they don't get paid as much. That's what she told me. I do what a doctor does, because she didn't go to school as long as, as a doctor. But she's got a, a big j job interview in just perfect what she wants. I, I believe God's already given to us, but I'm going to ask you to still pray. I texted her this morning. I says, honey... That's the job you're going to get that because she's in the ch children uh, health and there's a clinic five minutes from her house, five minutes from her house. It, uh, that is, it'd be just be perfect. And it's a, a, a less doctors, six doctors, I think. It's the kind of environment that she would like to participate in with these children. So pray especially that that interview tomorrow for my granddaughter, Jessica, that that job would be secured. And uh, I'm already, I told her it's a, it's a done deal. And uh, But let's give her hope because she says, I hope so, Papa. And she calls me Papa. She says, I hope so, Papa. <laughs> I says, okay, sweet. I said, the people at church are praying too, and we are. And we need to pray about something. I had a guy, I'll tell you this, a guy, a good friend of mine, a very predominant person I'm not going to mention his name but I'm involved with him and some big things in regards to homeless and, and the shelter out in uh, and we had a great big bake through yesterday and, uh, and I said uh, man 
God really come through for us on this. I mean, we really had a big breakthrough yesterday. And and it, there's going to be a shelter, hopefully within eight months, if, if, if it goes the way we're believing it could go. And there's some people trying to throw a monkey wrench in it, like the city manager uh, and his cohorts. Uh, maybe that'll get back to him. I don't know. He knows how I feel about him. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, I said, God's coming through. He says, yeah, it seems like he is. And and, and he told me this. He said, uh, could you tell something to God for me? <laughs> and I says, you can talk to him yourself. <laughs> huh? You can talk to him yourself. All he really needs to do, what he really needs to do is call upon God for salvation. He's a good man, what the world would call a great man, but he's unsaved, and he's about that close. <laughs> I says, why don't you talk to him for yourself? Yeah, yeah. He says, well, anyway, I'll try. <laughs> God is good. He's alive. Aren't you glad he's alive? Amen. I'm glad he's alive for me today as I preach, and with you in the audience, and we out there on Facebook, and and uh, and see others that are... Uh, Dear friends and more people coming on here and things. God bless every one of you that come in on Facebook. Amen. We're going to eat. Thank you, Lord, for our food. Nice chicken dinner. Rice and gravy. Salad. I don't know what kind of vegetable we have. We always have nice meals here. God bless all of you out there on Facebook. Let me know if you've been saved. And uh, I'm going to shut off now, and we'll be on, uh, Lord willing, we'll be on Facebook tomorrow. I'm going to finish this thing now. God bless you. Have a good day.